Welcome to the Disability Channel. I'm your host, Jay Stoyd. We're here in Halden, Burlington. We're here at Tech Place, and we're here with Spiro Careers Canada Executive Elizabeth Plouffe. Elizabeth, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for letting me come on. That was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. This is great. Elizabeth is such a mainstay and a champion for the Halton. Tell us all what you do, Elizabeth. This is amazing. All what I do. My goodness. Well, I guess condense it a little condense. bit. Uh, so right now my main focus is working with the autism community and connecting them to online services and, and autism specific employment coaches. Right now the autism community faces an 85% unemployment rate or underemployment rate which tends to keep them on disability and support programs, way below poverty level for living, doesn't allow for independent living, it's just not great. Um, and so we are fixing kind of a, a broken model. Mm -hmm. so that people can access coaches, training, all kinds of good things, get a job, keep a job, and sort of navigate those interesting aspects of having a job. I have to find, because our, our, our platform started out in Toronto, maybe because Toronto's so big, right? Toronto's so big, and then we moved into P, uh, Peel, and it has a great, uh, a, a great community of, of support mechanism, but I have to say, not quite like Halton. Holden, for some reason, the people like we just met with the MPP, Jane McKenna, I met with so many of your associates, they are so passionate about helping people within the community for out sure. here in Burlington and in Hamilton and the surrounding areas. It's, it's, it's a different vibe. It's a different it is, vibe. It's a small community. So Burlington is growing exponentially, you know, fortunately or unfortunately growing exponentially. And we're really fortunate to have a lot of services. Um, I became more impassioned about employment and autism. My son uh, is 21. He has Asperger's syndrome. Great guy. Um, you know, smart, funny, creative, all those good things. But navigating getting a job, bit of a challenge, mm -hmm. a little bit socially awkward. And we were extremely fortunate to connect to the Autism Job Club, which is run by Marilyn Ellis. Yes. And Marilyn's doing an amazing job at bringing services and training. It's twice a month meetings at uh, currently at Robert Bateman High School. And we were really fortunate to connect with her and, and see exactly what was going on. Because my experience up until that point had been my son. So I just assumed that everybody on the spectrum was kind of like Thomas. Not the case. Huge. I mean, there's a spectrum within the spectrum. All very intelligent, very talented, very skilled, but just barriers and challenges yep, around yep. getting a job. This is great. I find like like yourself, Elizabeth and, and Marilyn, mm -hmm. so many um, passionate, focused females, ladies. You guys really just <laughs> is this something like not only do you have always, obviously the mother, you know, factor, but yeah. you guys just seem so efficient. Like well, so you just get things done. It's it's I'm gonna say yes. So it's yes. true. It's true because yeah. I work with everybody. I work with guys, girls, everybody. It just seems like the ladies just seem to give that have that little bit of energy and, and well, get sure up and go. So I was recently described as tenacious. Okay. By two fellow women entrepreneurs, um, and so I took that as a massive compliment. And I think it's just not accepting the status quo, not accepting that my son can't get a job, not accepting that employers don't understand um, how beneficial the autism community could be to their company, and just knowing that we need to fix that, and knowing it can be fixed. So can you tell us, just let's move things ahead a little bit, can you yeah. tell us some of your goals now for yourself, for your son, for the community, what are, you, what are you working on right now? So I have a few, what I call big audacious hairy goals, I stole that from Jim Collins, who's a great author. And one of them, which you and I have talked about, is creating what's called an ability hub. Um, so that's the sort of the phase beyond NanoWorks. So NanoWorks is the platform that we're building that's going to connect employment coaches and the services and what have you. The next phase would be to create um, an autism-specific employment coaching program. So people who are currently human resources professionals or employment coaches will be able to learn how to work with the autism community because there's definitely some, some things to consider. And then the phase beyond that is what you and I have talked about, which is an ability hub. So basically, picture tech place, um, more autism friendly. Mm -hmm. So lower lighting, lower noise, all those great things. And all kinds of social enterprise involved with that, social impact programs, so that people on the spectrum have somewhere they're comfortable to go to learn skills, build skills, connect with people. One place, one shot. You don't have to go to six different great places idea. to get what you need. 
And Great I know there's, there's a number of organizations that are interested in a, in a similar idea, so we're partnering all over the place to make that happen. That's wonderful. Just ask the mayor of Burlington to sell me Robert Bateman High School. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're working on it. We're, we're trying. Working on we're it. trying. So let me ask you this. If there yeah. was a new, because, you know, you, you, this is your world, so yeah. if there was a new family mm -hmm. that had a baby, yep. and they thought, mm, something, something, something going on. Something going on here. Yep. Um, take us through what could they do? What would they do? How can they get support? Say, like, like, give me an example. I know they don't come to you per, no. per se, but yeah. they're probably lost. Yeah, they're yeah. lost. So our experience actually started um, in Thomas's nursery school. Okay. Where the teacher brought to our attention that he was doing things a little differently than the other kids. Okay. Which I embrace, kind of weird and different. So I'm like, it's just the way he is, and that's okay. Apparently not. Biggest piece of advice would be, if somebody's letting you know that something's a little different about your kid, don't take it personally, don't get offended. Good point. Investigate, because there's nothing to be lost by investigating. And I ended up going to uh, our developmental pediatrician, mm -hmm. or sorry, our regular pediatrician, and saying, you know what, enough people are telling me that something's off, that I think we need a referral. And we ended up at Aaron Oak. But the pediatrician was like, no, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And if I had listened to her, we would have been delayed by a number of years in getting Thomas the services and, and um, different things that we ended up getting in place for him. So why do you think that doctor, no, you know, I'm not blaming the doctor. Now, yep. Why do you think the doctor like went that way? Well, just not educated enough or what's going on? No, because t so people who have Asperger's syndrome, yeah. right, which is a form of autism, don't present as your typical autistic kid. Okay. Right? So the public's awareness of autism is kids who are flapping their hands, nonverbal, won't look you in the eye, have, you know, what would be considered antisocial behaviors, what have you. Mm -hmm. My son didn't present that way. Okay. Very friendly, very verbal, oh, very whoa, engaging, okay. but just some Selfless repetitive. Still. Yeah. And so definitely you know your kid better than anybody. There you go. That was the one thing my husband kept telling me, you know our son better than anybody. Somebody's telling you something's off, you need to listen for sure. Yep. And then take those steps to investigate because you lose a huge amount of time when you don't do that and autism does have time frames where you need to get in and provide some services and get an understanding and move forward. But no, it's not your fault. Yeah. That's the biggest thing that I think parents struggle with is that we, and I had that when my son was first diagnosed at seven, I thought, oh heck, what did I do? Sure. Guilty, and as right? the mom, yeah. you know, we're go-getters and we're doers, but we're also the people that, you know, feel probably the most guilty, probably feel the most guilty. Yeah. In a way, right? Don't let that overwhelm yeah, you. That's right. Don't let that coddle stop. You know, like, don't start coddling your kid because you feel guilty. Best thing my son ever said to me when he was 10 years old was, what do you expect from me? I'm autistic. Huh. And I looked at him and I said, I expect more. Don't ever think that that diagnosis gets you a buy out of anything. Trying to work it. Well. Not really, but. You know he was. Yeah. He totally was. was he? And he was cute as a button. Red hair, green eyes, pale skin, freckles, like yeah. the whole package. So he could work it. Work like, it. Oh yeah. my goodness. Worked his EAs, worked his teachers. Believe me. He Not had mom. A, yeah. Not mom. Not mom. And I said, don't let anybody ever tell you you can't do something because you'll never hear that from me. That's great. That's a great. That's a that's a great way to end the interview. Um, <laughs> so if people want to get more involved, see if they want to volunteer, they just want to hear more. We can. They can just go to your website www.spiralcareerscanada.ca. So they're welcome to go and check it out yeah. as far as uh, as far as volunteering goes. Um, I would check out autismjobclub.ca. Okay. okay. We're not we're not in a capacity right now for volunteering. Um, we do have an art show coming up in partnership with Silicon Halton, Chris Herbert, that we're going to have some more information coming out about. Is that it? Do you have a date for that yet or not? The weekend of January 24th. There you go. Yes. There you so go. we are currently working on that. Um, we're going to be, I think we're calling it the Artistic Collective, which is sort of a play on autism and how creative and artistic they can be. So we'll have details coming out about that. but. Definitely check out SpiroCareersCanada.ca or NanaWorks.ca. Both leads to the same place. Autism Job Club would be another awesome place. They're always looking for ideas and That's and wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. We really appreciate it. Again, we're here with SpiroCareersCanada.ca, Elizabeth Palouf. <laughs>
She is the director and the big boss here, so we're really I'm, I'm appreciative. I'm the chief minion. So. There you go. <laughs> really appreciate about your time, and uh, you're doing wonderful work here for the Holden, Thank you. city of Holden. So. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. You're watching the Disability Channel. I'm Jay Stoyan. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.